So if you don't know by now, the main protagonist of Assassin's Creed Mirage coming out this October is Basim ibn Ishaq. Who knows, maybe this month at the Ubisoft Forward event, we'll get a closer look at Mirage and some more details on Basim. And while we know that Mirage strives to bring back the nostalgic essence of Ubisoft's long-standing series, Mirage seamlessly blends the old and new, perfectly aligned with a franchise known for its seamless transitions between different time periods, such as the present day and 9th century Baghdad. Assassin's Creed Mirage is super exciting because it brings back Basim's story while also keeping the series' true essence intact. But who actually is Basim and what's his role in the story of Mirage? That's what I want to go over in this video. I will explain what there is to know about Basim and how he could potentially fit into the story of Assassin's Creed Mirage. If you enjoyed this type of video, be sure to subscribe and without further ado, let's begin. Even though Basim doesn't exactly steal the spotlight in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, his role as Eivor's mentor and companion is absolutely vital. Basim takes on a supporting role, entering the stage as a stranger, hailing from the Holy Land. Accompanied by his trusted ally Hytham, they cross paths with the Viking warrior Sigurd, who actually introduces Eivor to these newfound companions of the Hidden Ones. Basim eagerly lends a helping hand to Sigurd and Eivor as they embark on their mission to conquer Norway and also England. To our surprise, Basim even gifts the Hidden Blade to Eivor, despite Eivor having no prior ties to the Hidden Ones or even their beliefs. Now when it comes to Basim in Valhalla, the story is a bit confusing, so I'll try to do my best to explain it without trying to confuse you. So, in the timeline of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the Hidden Ones aren't fully recognised as the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood just yet. But they were growing pretty fast and were just beginning to expand into a noteworthy influence of power across the world of Assassins. Now here is where Basim's story gets a bit, you know, weird. Besides Basim being a member of the Hidden Ones, he also has this pretty interesting role as the reincarnation of Loki, who if you don't know is the Norse god and is the god of mischief, trickery and deception. The identity of Basim being Loki slowly starts to unravel in Valhalla but it's still a tad bit confusing on how he actually managed to become Loki. Both Basim and Loki share some sort of extraordinary connection. They are the exact same person. Loki, who is a formidable being from the ancient Isu order, predates even the early civilizations that sprouted on Earth. These Isu gods have wielded immense influence over the world, guiding humanity through the events of history. But when a cataclysmic event rocks their world, only a select few, including Odin, Tyr and Loki, manage to preserve their essence by transferring themselves into a supercomputer called Yggdrasil. Now here is where things get pretty interesting. So as I mentioned before, Basim is none other than the reincarnation of Loki himself. He's in fact fueled by the blazing hatred towards Odin, who now inhabits Eivor's very form, and also Tia, who resides within Sigurd. Basim embarks on a quest for revenge. He seeks justice for his son Fenrir, who's bound and confined by Odin's command. And as if that was not enough, Basim yearns for a long-awaited reunion with his beloved Alethea, whose true identity is revealed to be Angra Boda, who is Loki's lover from the interesting world of Norse mythology. So fast forward a tad bit towards the end of Valhalla. Basim teams up with Eivor and the Raven Clan to steal some powerful artifact from the Isu. But that's when things start to get pretty intense as Basim's secret is revealed and then turns into the antagonist. If at this point you're unfamiliar why he became evil, remember how I said Eivor was Odin and how Odin had confined Loki's son Fenrir. It's all starting to make a little bit more sense now. So you can see why he became the antagonist in the actual Viking timeline. But before Basim can take revenge on the two, a big fight ensued and Sigurd and Eivor came out victorious by locking Basim in Yggdrasil and seemingly incapacitating him for eternity. But it doesn't end there. You see Leila Hassan in the modern day managed to track down the location of Yggdrasil through Eivor's memories. And when Leila heads to the Norwegian temple where Basim for Eivor and Sigurd, something crazy happens. Leila gets stuck inside the computer, while Basim, who was asleep for a thousand years, finally wakes up and becomes free. This was because when he fell, he managed to touch a piece of the staff. And now he has control of the staff of Hermes, which is the same one that Cassandra used in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. After connecting with Alethea's consciousness inside the staff, Basim verified that Odin had been dead for a while and that Leila had successfully accomplished her mission. 
After that, it just goes back to the modern day where Basim meets Rebecca and Sean. The motives of Basim are relatively clear. He just wants to bring back his son Fenrir, and that's pretty much where the story concludes of Basim in Valhalla. So the real question now is from what I just said, how on earth does Basim fit in Assassin's Creed Mirage? So how does this fit into the story of Mirage? Especially since it happens before the actual time period that Assassin's Creed Valhalla is set in. The most reasonable idea is that Basim in the present day will use the Animus, maybe with the staff of Hermes, to relive his past memories, find his children and get back together with his old lover. Choosing Basim as the main character for Assassin's Creed Mirage is a pretty logical decision, since he hails from the same region and was born during the 9th century when the Abbasid Caliphate held power. The game setting kind of resembles Assassin's Creed 1, featuring Arabian desert cities and stunning Islamic architecture from the medieval era. While Basim is depicted as a skilled assassin in Valhalla, Assassin's Creed Mirage will present a different side to him. In this game, Basim will be portrayed as a younger version, still in the process of learning the art of stealth and perfecting his parkour abilities to defeat enemies. Taking into account the historical timeline, Basim serves as a perfect character to reintroduce us to the roots of the Assassin's Creed series. His story intertwines with a significant phase in the evolution of the Assassin Brotherhood, presenting us with opportunities to witness pivotal moments that provide additional context to previous games in the series. To fully grasp Basim's character, it becomes essential for us to acquaint ourselves with his portrayal in Assassin's Creed Valhalla before delving into the world of Mirage. But there are so many challenges for Basim. First off, Mirage shows us Basim's life as a street thief, learning how to become a hidden one through his mentor Rashan. I guess Loki or Basim already knows these memories. So the real question is why is he going all the way back to a past life to find his children from thousands of years ago, even before he was a human? You see, what Ubisoft needs to do is bridge the story gap between the ending of Assassin's Creed Valhalla and also the beginning of Mirage. Assassin's Creed Mirage should provide us with an insight into how Loki came to possess Basim's body and shed light on his activities leading up to the encounter with Sigurd and Eivor, where his quest for revenge against the resurrected Aesir gods began. While whatever the case may be, it is anticipated that Mirage will unveil the answers to numerous unresolved questions that were shown at the conclusion of Valhalla. So yeah, while there's not much information about Basim in Assassin's Creed Mirage to go off, hopefully Ubisoft can fill in that gap at the upcoming Ubisoft Forward event this month. Who knows, maybe we'll get more gameplay footage, or even some information about Basim's mentor Rashan. 